Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to prep and plan for my homeschool's next unit study. We are going to talk all about Gather Round Homeschool's Oceans Unit Study. So for those of you that are new around here, my name is Sarah and I am the mom of five children. They are ages 13, 11, 7, 2 and a half, and a 10 month old baby. That's right, I am taking care of teenagers, elementary school kids, a toddler, and nursing a baby. My plate is very full and that's why I want to talk to you more today about Gather Round Homeschool. If you are here watching this video, you are probably already familiar with this curriculum, but if you're not, I'm just going to give you a very brief overview. Gather Round Homeschool is a unit study style homeschool that has been on the market for just over a year now. It was written by Rebecca Spooner and it is a curriculum that allows you to teach all of the subjects except for math to all of your children at the same time. It makes it super easy for you to create a one room schoolhouse feel inside of your homeschool. Now, how this looks in practice is pretty simple. What you do is you gather all of your children together and you read to them from the teacher guide. This takes anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes. And while you're reading, your young ones may be coloring a coloring sheet and your older kids might be taking notes on a notebooking page about the information that you're reading to them. After you're done reading, all of your kids will take their own student notebooks and work in them. If you would like more information about Gather Round, I would definitely point you to their website and also to some of my other reviews and videos that I've made about Gather Round this year. I will make sure to link all of that information below in the description box. Okay, so now that we have all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive in. Now in our home, we use the digital version of each of the unit studies. So I went to their website, bought the unit, and downloaded it through my email. After I received all of that information, I got busy printing. You guys have heard me talk about my printer before. I absolutely love my brother printer and copy machine, and I will make sure to leave a link to it or something similar to it down below. But I do use 28 weight paper when I am printing all of my pages for Gather Round. And typically I will print all of the pages two-sided and just in the past I've been really simple and just three hole punched them and put them in three ring binders. Well, this time I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm kind of testing things out. I actually was able to find a Happy Planner binding system that I got on clearance, really a good price. And so I am testing out this new binding system. Um, if you're on the Gather Round Facebook page, you've probably seen some other mamas using this. I will let you guys know once we get through this unit how this binding system worked and if I feel like it's a good investment or not. Um, but if you're new to Gather Round, you can simply just print these and hole punch them. You do, you do not have to get fancy with binding systems. The other thing I did this time was I went ahead and laminated the cover page and the back page of each of my kids' student notebooks. I just chose to do this for durability's sake and it just, it just makes it look really nice. So while I was in print and organization mode, I also went ahead and printed all of the animal flashcards that were provided in the back of the teacher guide in the appendix. I printed all of those out onto cardstock and just went ahead and cut those out. So when I was all said and done doing all of my printing and purchasing, I printed one teacher's guide, two middle school student notebooks, one early reader student notebook, and I'll talk about this more later, but I also went ahead and printed out some extra coloring sheets for my toddler from the pre-reader notebook. All in all, all of the printing and organizing, punching and laminating probably took me about one to two hours. This will vary depending on what type of printer you have. And again, if, if this is not your cup of tea, you can always order the physical units from Gather Round and have them shipped right to your door. So once I have everything printed and organized, I sit down with everything that I have made with a large cup of coffee 
and spend some time brainstorming. I really take a lot of time and pour through the teacher's guide, the day at a glance pages. I flip through all of my kids' different lessons. A lot of times I will just stack them down the table so that I can flip all of the pages and look at lesson three for my middle schooler, lesson three from the teacher's guide, and lesson three from my early reader pages all at once. That way I can just get a really good feel for what we will be covering in the next four to five weeks. I also go ahead and flip to the supply list in the teacher guide and just do a little check to make sure I have all of those supplies on hand. Honestly, most of the things that they suggest are items that you are most likely going to already have on hand for your homeschool or in your kitchen or home anyways. Anything that we don't have on hand, I just go ahead and add to our grocery or shopping list for the month. Gather Round also offers you some really beautiful planning pages at the front of the teacher's guide that are really helpful when you're in this brainstorming process. The next thing I do as I'm planning and preparing is is hop on to the Gather Round app. Now, this is something a little bit new. It just came out this spring and it is, it is so fun, guys. It is really, really helpful, especially for some of these early units in year one from Gather Round where there's a lot of other mamas out there who have already done the unit. If you haven't checked out the Gather Round app, I would definitely encourage you to download it. It's a free download for your phone and it is definitely a Facebook feel kind of app where you can join a community. So for instance, I joined the Oceans community and I'm able to log on and see other moms' book recommendations, their activity suggestions, things that they did to go along with every lesson. It really just gives you a great big picture scope of what you're going to be covering for the unit. Now, when I am in this brainstorming mode, I do not get too caught up into scheduling our lessons for specific days for the next four or five weeks, we are definitely more of an open and go style of homeschool. Um, I, I like to have my mind wrapped around where we're going, what we're going to do, but I don't get too detailed with assigning certain things for certain days. So we will be starting Oceans after a month long summer break that we've had in our homeschool. And so we're gonna do Oceans in August. And I plan this purposefully because Lord willing, we're going to be doing a beach trip. And I just really wanted to pair studying Oceans alongside of that beach trip. That being said, I am planning on easing back into our school year and I want to leave room for days if we want to head to the pool or play in the sprinkler or if we need a sick day or if the baby didn't sleep through the night and mama needs a mental health day. I, I don't want to overly schedule myself too much. So I just loosely plan for the month ahead and, and we just get as much accomplished as we can. I do as I am in this brainstorming phase is I look at the suggested book list. Gather Round actually offers you at the beginning of the teacher's guide a broken down list by age range of different book suggestions to go along with the unit study. So I look through that list and see if there's anything that I know I already own and have on my own bookshelves here at home. And if there's any titles in particular that I want to reserve at our local library or order an online purchase. So now I thought I would just plug in a quick little flip through of all of the books that are in our book basket for our ocean unit.
I'm actually gonna organize this a little bit differently than I've done in the past. I thought what I would do is go through and show you the things that I am planning for each of my children's age ranges so that we could talk about my toddler, about my elementary school kid and my middle school kids and kind of show you what we're planning for each of those different ages. And then I will give you some of the things we're gonna plan for our whole family all together. I will make sure to link any book titles or activities or any, any supplies that I talk about. I'll make sure to link as many as I can below in the description box. So like I said earlier, I have a two and a half year old toddler and he is just starting to get a little bit curious, a little bit interested in what it is that we're doing around the homeschool table every day. Much more often he is toddling in here and crawling up in my lap while I'm reading out of the teacher guide or wanting to sit down with his siblings and color while they're working in their notebooks. So I thought I would just take advantage of that and come up with a couple of little activities and things that he could do on those days where he wants to be a part of the group and wants to have something to do. Now, at two and a half years old, that's about his attention span, two and a half minutes. So the items you see me talking about today and the things I did for him are meant to be very short, very simple, hands-on for a few seconds, and then off he can go to go play or do something else. The first thing I did for Ezra is I went ahead and opened up the pre-reader pages and I printed out the coloring pages to go along with each of the daily lessons. And I did this really simply. I didn't bind it. I didn't do anything like that. I just printed these in black and white and stapled them down the side so it's kind of like his own little oceans coloring book that he can use alongside of the kids whenever he is wanting to join in on homeschool for the day. I also went ahead and purchased this Melissa and Doug reusable sticker pad for him. It's the under the sea theme and it has five different scenes with, oh gosh, 245 stickers to go with it. And so as you can see here, there's just lots of sea creature animals that he can stick on to these reusable sticker pages. They're, they're just like that nice glossy material. Um, reusable stickers are definitely the way to go when you have a toddler. He in particular loves to put them on and take them off. So he will really enjoy this. Um, here's a little pirate ship theme, all, all kinds of really fun under the sea sticker pages. So several years ago when I attended a homeschool conference, I was very inspired by the Homegrown Preschoolers booth. And I just got so many ideas and encouragement for creating sensory bins and stations for my younger kids. So I wanna try to be a little bit more intentional this year with Ezra and create some very simple sensory bins for him to go alongside of the units. Oceans is kind of a really easy one to start with. Um, I'm thinking one day we could do some water play in the water table that he already has out back. I also have some kinetic sand that would just be super fun to pair some seashells and some little sand tools with that he could play with. And then lastly, I absolutely love water beads. So I bought one of these ocean animal tubes by Safari and I will just put all of these little animals in the water beads and let him play with that. Now, word to the wise, if you have a toddler who doesn't know not to put things like water beads in their mouth, make sure that you are watching them when they're doing any type of sensory activity so that they don't, you know, put things in their mouth that they shouldn't. Not, not that that's ever happened around here. <laughs> okay, maybe it has. Really neat in the teacher's guide, Gather Round actually gave an entire list of suggested wild crats and different cartoon kind of video episode guide so i'm sure that we will take advantage of that and turn on some of those ocean themed episodes for him while the older kids and i are trying to work through the student notebooks Okay, so for my elementary school aged kids, my daughter Mariah just turned seven and I honestly think that she would enjoy doing a lot of the activities that I've planned for Ezra as a toddler. So I'm sure she's gonna jump in and do a lot of those with him. But on top of that, I also grabbed a couple of just special things for her. Like most preschool and elementary school kids, Mariah loves stickers. So I just picked up some shark and whale and just 
fish stickers for her. We'll use these for motivation or just maybe we'll use them when she completes different pages in her student notebook. Mariah is also a huge fan of Dot to Dots. So I found this Dot to Tot Wales book. It was only $1.95 on Rainbow Resource. And it, it actually goes up pretty high. Like this first one here goes up to the number 39. Um, so it just has ocean themed animal dots to dots. And then obviously she can use it as a coloring book and color these in. So this will be something fun that she can do while she's waiting on Noah and Leah to finish those notebooking pages for their middle school pages. So the writing project that's suggested in the early reader pages is that your child will be working on writing a paragraph about an ocean animal. Now, like I said, Mariah is just seven and writing a sentence, let alone writing a paragraph, is going to be a little bit challenging for her. So I definitely envision her dictating a lot of it to me, maybe me writing out the paragraph and then her using it as copy work. We'll just kind of see how it goes, but I'm really excited to kind of make this little animal paragraph, animal report style of writing project with her this year. Okay, so my two oldest kids are 11 and 13. They are roughly around sixth to seventh grade, and I decided to make the jump and move both of them into the middle school notebooking pages this year. The writing project in the middle school pages is they are going to either write a blog post or a newspaper article. So one of the first things I've done as I've been prepping and planning for the unit is I went ahead and grabbed a couple of newspapers, one of our community's weekly newspapers that gets delivered to our house every week. And I also grabbed one of the big Sunday papers for our city. And this will just be a really good reference tool for them as they're kind of figuring out what a newspaper article looks like. And then we can also spend some time looking at some different blogs to figure out how they could write a blog post. Another additional activity that I think we may throw in there, just, just because I have the stuff on hand, I think it would be really fun, is to do a layers of the ocean in a mason jar using food coloring and different liquids to create those different layers. So I think we're definitely going to try to do that one week. So I also mentioned this when we did our human body study this spring we did an art day where my kids took canvases and pastels and acrylic paints and went out back and just had an art afternoon and I had said then that I think we're gonna do that every single unit and this time around I think we might do watercolors one of the books suggested in Gather Round's book suggestion list is a watercolor book. So I went ahead and reserved that from our library and I think one afternoon we'll have a watercolor day out in the backyard. Something else that I'm excited about is in the teacher's guide this time around, there are some step-by-step -step drawing instructions that teach your child how to step-by-step -step draw a sea lion or the different ocean creatures that they're learning about. My kids will definitely use that. They'll use it on their daily notebooking pages when they're drawing, but I think they'll definitely probably use that as well for our art day. I also think that you could use that as part of your nature journal studies if nature journals are something you do in your homeschool. I'm actually this fall going to do an entire series about nature studies, but I think we'll use some of that drawing techniques and instruction maybe in some of our nature journals. Now, something else that I bought for my middle school kids that honestly, Mariah, my elementary school kid will do with them as well, that it, it has to do with sand, which has to do with the ocean, is I got this Sandtastic Classic Colored Sand Kit. I just thought it would be a fun craft thing for them to do um, outside since it's summer, less mess. Um, they can just kind of make these little layered sand bottles out of different sand. This kit actually came with everything I needed. It comes with the bottles, all of the different colors of sand, lids, all of the things. So this sand art activity set will be really, really fun and we'll, we'll make a really fun Friday fun day. With our Oceans unit study, I envision a lot of family movie nights. I'm thinking we'll probably do some Disney classics, Little Mermaid, Finding Nemo, Finding Dory, Moana, any, anything that has to do with the ocean or ocean animals. I also think we might do some um, other family movie nights, especially maybe with my older kids, 
Free Willy, Dolphin Tail, Flipper, some movies like that. I also envision us doing a lot of documentaries. I know that there's a Disney Oceans documentary that's out there, I think on Disney Plus, but I know that there is oh, no end in sight to the ocean and animal documentaries that you could watch to go along with this unit. Now, something else that I was really inspired about when I was actually watching another Gather Round Homeschool Mom is she was doing a puzzle as a family, a thousand piece puzzle for every single unit that she did from Gather Round. Now, when I was pregnant with my fourth child, my daughter and I tried to do a thousand piece puzzle to no avail and I have learned 500, 500 is our number in our house. So I went ahead and picked up actually two 500 piece ocean themed puzzles. The first one I ordered off of Amazon and I will link it below. It came in this really nice little plastic case here and it came with a printout of what the puzzle looks like. It is super colorful, has lots of different animals. I, I think this will be a really fun puzzle to do together. After I bought this one on Amazon, I just happened to be at the Dollar Tree and saw this Puzzle Bug 500 puzzle for a dollar. And you know, of course I was not going to pass that up. So we have two different puzzle options that we can work on little by little as we're doing the unit. I may even set up a card table or something on our first floor here and maybe a few days let the kids work on the puzzle while I'm reading the teacher guide instead of having them write out notes. For every unit, I also make sure to pick at least one read aloud that I read to the kids during breakfast and sometimes also during lunch. So the read aloud I picked for this unit was Treasure Island. I actually bought this Usborne book at an Usborne party that I went to several years ago and we never read it. I'm also planning to read Seabird to the kids. Um, I might do Treasure Island at breakfast and Seabird at lunch every day. Seabird is um, a beautiful feet book that I bought when we did a geography unit by them. And so I'm excited to kind of read little bits of that book every day to the kids. All right, so in four to five weeks, once my kids have completed the unit, I will make sure to come back here on YouTube and post a full video review of Gather Round's Oceans unit study. I will do a flip through of the curriculum and give you a really nice long peek into the teacher's guide, as well as my kids' completed work in their different student notebooks. I'm also getting ready to launch my back to school series coming up in August, where I will share all of our official fall curriculum picks, some school supply hauls, and, and lots more stuff, guys. So if you haven't done so already, please hit that red subscribe button. It will make sure that you don't miss any of this content and it really helps to support my channel. If you like this kind of content, please give this video a thumbs up. If you are planning on doing the Oceans Unit Study or you've already completed it, please leave me a comment down below. Introduce yourself, tell me what things went well or what things you're looking forward to doing this year with your Gather Round Unit. I would love to meet you. Thank you so much for watching. See you later.